Hey everybody, welcome to Boots and Jeans Riders. I'm Rich. I'm Cake. Out on another ride. Looks like a no, fire no. up there. Might be controlled Back burning. Room. It just controlled wood burning. Hope so. Maybe they barbecuing. You ever thought of that? <laughs> yeah, they barbecuing. Oh my goodness. Yeah, they barbecuing. They got them cows <laughs> going on over there. I'm cool. I don't want to eat there. They don't want to eat. Mm. It's smoked. How you hey. like it? Uh, I'm good. <laughs> anyway, we are riding the back roads, heading back home, and we got a question for you guys. You know, everybody will be talking about group riding and everything, and our question is, if you're a leader of a ride, and I'll explain what I mean by leader, what are your responsibilities? By that, I'm asking is, are you responsible for everybody's safety? on that ride. As a ride leader, are you responsible for everybody's safety on that ride? Now wait, before you guys answer, let me explain what I mean by ride leader. I don't necessarily mean a person that actually leading the ride. I'm not talking about the point guy. I'm talking about the coordinator. I coordinate a lot of rides and my question is, as a coordinator or ride leader, are you responsible for everybody's safety on that ride? Okay, you want to go with it first? I would say, yeah. You oh, yeah. are. You're not so much as responsible for everybody on the ride, but you are responsible for knowing their abilities of riding this route that you have taken, that you have chosen for them uh -huh. to, for this ride. So if we're on a lot of twisties. We need to know what their ride level skills or experience are on these on the twisty roads. Right. So that's the first thing that you should ask, the question that you should ask Ooh, them. What happened to our son? <laughs> when we're doing um, the ride briefing, let's find uh -huh. out where, the, where their skill levels are and their experience on the twisty roads. So, so you saying the answer is yes? Yes. So Cake's answer was she believed that the ride leader, and like I said, I'm talking about a person who put the ride together and responsible for everybody's safety on that ride. So my answer is yes and no. Yes is basically exactly what Cake said. We put a lot of rides together. And in putting those rides together, we, when we invite people, we gotta know who we're inviting. Like she said, what their skill levels are. Are they used to riding twisties? Are they used to riding straightaways? All these type of things. And if somebody show up that we didn't invite, I'm going to pull them aside and say, hey, this is a very technical ride. You know, like we live in California, we love riding the, the twisty roads. Oh, that was pretty. A red tail hawk. We like riding twisty roads. And if you don't believe me, check out our last couple of videos when we rode Mines Road up to Mount Hamilton Observatory and the second video on our way down. That's well, kind of technical roads for some people. They would not ride those roads. And that's who we are. So, yes, I think we're responsible for everybody's safety because if you let somebody ride that ride, join that ride or invite somebody, and you don't know their skill level, they are nervous and they're scared to speak up. And all of a sudden they run off the road, you know, you might have a conscience to where you're going, wow, I should have I've done that. Because remember, Kick, well, the ride that we rode up in the hills and a guy ran off the road twice? Yes. And I think yes. that's where... I, or I could say we made a mistake by not asking his skill level. This guy actually ran off the road twice, older guy, and I automatically assumed that he'd know how to ride. And his answer was, I'm just riding above, above my skill level trying, trying to keep up with everybody else. And he ran off the road the second time. I actually had to take his keys from him. My kid caught up with the rest of the group and let him know that the guy ran off the road. Fortunately, yeah. he didn't kill himself, and he's still riding today. But he actually ran off the road, and I made a mistake you know, just by joking with this guy. And we started talking football, and he had looked like he had experience, and he was on a new bike, and he did not yeah, do a good job on that entire a, ride. When he riding a, a, a nice BMW or yeah, something like that? Yeah, brand new BMW, 1600, and I think. what we learned later was that he hadn't ridden a bike in 15 years. Well, based on what I've seen, I think he was just kind of new to riding and his skill level wasn't even close. And we invited him to come to the practices. He hadn't showed up to any of the practices. So in that case, 
I, I say, well, if he would have got injured, it would have been my fault for not questioning him and just automatically assuming. Now, the reason I, that's the reason I say, yes, we are responsible. Lead, Ryan leaders are responsible. And I say no, because if you covered all your grounds and you talk to the person and say, hey, you might want to sit this ride out. Pride probably won't let that person sit this ride out anyway, but you covered the ground by saying, this is going to be a technical ride. This is going to be, like we ride it now, we ride a back road now, they got some little sweepers and a couple of twisties, but this is not a technical ride. This is what we do often. And we know this road very, very well, so we can ride at a higher speed than most. But even on this road, if I was saying, hey, let's go take this short ride, uh, and it is going to be a, a fairly twisted, I would still ask people, Hey, are you comfortable riding? So, but the no part of the answer come with once you get on that ride, once you start the ride, like Cake said, ride your own ride. And if a person get into trouble, at least I cover the bases by telling them what type of ride we ride. Right. If we put in twisted rides together, I'm going to invite a select few. And people will say, well, then how are these people going to gain experience if you don't invite them? Well, they got to go out there and practice. They got to go out there and hit some roads that they know. Like this road here, we know very well. And we can ride it at a higher level, which would get us a little bit more training to ride different roads. Because we just use the same concept that we do on this road right. on unfamiliar roads. Turn it right up here. Okay. So the question is, are you responsible for everybody on that ride? And my answer is yes and no. If you do your pre-briefing and find out that there's somebody that should not be on that ride and you don't say nothing to them, then yeah, you're responsible. But once you say something to them and they don't abide by it, then you relieve your responsibility. You took the responsibility to say, hey, I'm not, I don't want to be responsible for this person who I believe is not or should not be on this road. That's should, just the that's just the bottom line. Should waiver sheets come into play when we riding on the twisties? No, I, I think no, I think not because then you know you, you're really putting somebody's skill level at the front. Now it's not a sanctioned ride by no group or anything. If so, then maybe it maybe. And if you're riding with a group that's really not doing a good pre-ride briefing, you know sometimes it's okay to hand out the route. But the pre-ride briefing is more on safety. Like we always ask people who has first aid kits, who are first aid CPR trained. And this is when we know we're going on a pretty long ride, or basically almost any ride that we put together. And, and we let people know, hey, it's going to be a pretty technical road. Like when we rode with the uh, Buffalo Soldiers, remember doing their they briefing? Yes. They told people that we are about to hit some serious twisties. If you're not comfortable with the twisties, then here's a secondary route that you can get to the destination that we're going to. And a lot of people took the secondary route, and then those of us who love twisties, we took the, the route with the twist. And I thought that was an excellent idea for them to do that. Right. So yes, I guess you can have a, a secondary backup plan if you're going to a specific destination and you can tell the people that, hey, if you're not used to twisties, those of you not, not used to twisties, go ahead on and ride this route here follow this leader and those of you who really want to get get down and you know get the california twisties in the oceans <laughs> follow us we got you so yeah so that's the thing now even with me putting the ride together or you know coordinate a ride so to speak i would like to know who are road captains and i wouldn't mind them leading the ride who are good at tail gunnering then they could do that and you can have a fantastic fun ride with people who know what they're doing and it doesn't mean that just because i put the ride together i have to lead the ride of course you know i like doing a lot of videos so it's kind of hard to video a whole group when you leading so that's why you very seldom see any videos that we put the ride together and, and leading it at the same time actually the, the point person at the same time Anyway, that's all I have for now. So make sure you put some thunder because she's trying to leave me. 
That ain't about to happen, girl. <laughs> so you put some comments in the comment section below. What do you think? And do you like riding group rides? Uh, and subscribe to the channel. Like and share. But outside of that, remember, ride long, ride hard, ride strong, and most importantly, ride safe. And we out. Peace. Peace.